Hi, welcome to another episode of PSLE Science Made Simple. I'm Joanna and I'm a PSLE Science Specialist here at the Peak Lab. In this video, I'll be analysing a past year examination question from the topic of body systems. I've placed the question in a handout and you may download it for free by clicking on the link in the description box below. So let's begin. The graph below shows the amount of undigested food entering four different parts of a human digestive system. Before looking at the questions, let's analyse this graph together. Now, there's a certain amount of undigested food entering part A. And in fact, this is where you can see that there's the most amount of undigested food entering. Now, if you look at B, what has happened to the amount of undigested food entering B? Yes, it becomes less, right? Now, what do you think would have happened to this amount of undigested food before entering B? Yes, the undigested food must have been broken down into simpler substances and become digested food. So let's write down this amount over here has been digested before entering part B. Now, since we said that this amount over here has been digested before entering part B, where do you think this digestion must have taken place? Digestion must have taken place before entering B, which is most likely at part A. Likewise, if you look at C, there is a much lower amount of undigested food entering C. So again, what has happened to this amount of undigested food? Yes, it has been digested before entering part C. And once again, this indicates digestion happened before entering C. And now if you look at D, the same amount of undigested food entered D as compared to C. So whatever undigested food entered C also entered D. That means, was there any digestion happening at C? No, if there was digestion happening, what would you have seen? We would have seen less undigested food entering part D. But did we see that? No, whatever undigested food entered C also entered D. That means there was no food digested at C. And this caused the amount of undigested food to remain the same. Now, let's look at the questions. Which part A, B, C or D represents the mouth? Now, in the mouth, this is where food just entered the digestive system. So, food just entered means nothing has been digested yet. So, no digestion yet. Now, since there was no digestion yet, what can you tell me about the amount of undigested food present in the mouth? No digestion yet means most of the undigested food would be present here. So let's write down most undigested food present. So in which part A, B, C or D is there most undigested food present? Yes, we have indicated over here that part A is the one where most undigested food is present. So answer for part A is A. Next, why is the amount of undigested food the same at part C and D? As what we discussed earlier, whatever undigested food entered C also entered D. And what is the reason? Because no food was digested at C, meaning there was no digestion taking place at part C. So let's write down, there is no digestion taking place at part C. Now, let's think a bit deeper. What could be a possible reason to why part C does not allow digestion to take place? 
Remember, in order for digestion to take place, what must be present to break the food down into simpler substances? Yes, there must be digestive juices released by the organ. So if there was digestive juices released by the organ, digestion can take place. And if there's no digestion taking place, it means that organ does not released any digestive juices and that is our reason for why there is no digestion taking place at part c s part c does not release any digestive juices Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you found this video useful, do give us a thumbs up. If you want to check out the other videos we made, click on the links on the right hand side. Last but not least, don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more interesting videos. Thank you and I'll see you next time. Bye!